We just talked about how you should handle being rejected from a developer job interview and how to move forward with that, take that experience to better yourself for the next job interview. However, what about before that? What do you need to do and know and prepare yourself to actually feel ready to apply for that developer job? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. This video is sponsored by Hostinger. They have a really good Black Friday deal going on right now, and I also have a promo code for you to get an even better deal, but more on that later. Now, I wanna tell you right out the gate that this, this video is gonna be slightly less structured than I normally make my videos, because I wanna just discuss some of these things, and it's a little bit random. The first one being a, uh, well, the job posting. Because <laughs> if you listen to these job postings, what I said in the intro is not gonna matter. You're never gonna feel ready for any of these entry-level programming jobs if you just pay attention to the job listings. If you're unaware, it's kind of a meme in the uh, developer community, maybe in other communities as well, about just how uh, poorly laid out the dev job postings are because they're done by HR people. So they want you in these listings to know everything. They don't want you to just be a Java developer or Java Spring Boot full stack developer knowing TypeScript and Angular. They also want you to know the entire MERN stack and MEAN stack and LAMP stack and SQL, which I mean, that's not unheard of. And some of these, basically every single other technology that there is involved with web development for an entry level web developer job. And then you get on the job and you're making WordPress sites for clients and not doing any custom plugins or custom themes. So why are the job listings like that? Eh, probably because the HR person is asking, oh, what exactly do they need to know? Oh, they, they're web developer position. Okay. So then the, what do web developers need to know? Oh, they have all these skills. Well, we want the best. So let's just take all of those and put it in here. A little bit of, a, of advice. Ignore most of the skills required for a job listing. If that person or if that job is requiring you to be a entry level web developer, do a little bit more research and you can find out what stack they use. Do some research into people who are currently developers on that team or for that company, or look at the project if you already know what project that they're working on. And you can use a tool like um, Built With, Technology Profiler, forgot what it was called. But you can use that and that'll tell you what the website or web app is built with. And if you know that's the project that you're gonna be working on, then you go from there. Then now you know what stack that you'll be using in the professional environment for that job. But also, no, if they're asking the world of you like many of these entry-level programming jobs do, know if you aren't qualified. And you may not always know this, but if they're asking for an iOS developer and you've never done iOS development and you've only done web development, and then sure, maybe you can figure that out on the job. And sure, if you have projects and stuff to back up your web development work and you apply for that job and you're honest with them about, hey, I do web development, but I'm a quick learner. I did this and that and they hire you on. Hey, great. But don't apply for that job if you don't have the skills to do that job. Apply for a job in which you do have the skills. Kind of makes sense, right? But with how some of these job listings and whatnot are laid out, it's sometimes difficult to figure out exactly which one you fit into. So I understand the desire to apply to all these different jobs. Just try to consolidate into iOS development or mobile app development or web development or whatever you may do, regardless of what stack they use. And then you can figure that out with a little more research or later on if you pass that first filter, the filter in the uh, job interview. Because then they look at your, your, your application, your resume, whatever it is. If you don't have a college degree, some of them throw it in the trash, even if you're probably the best to do it or, you know, they'll look, they'll bring you in, you know, it's a filter process. All right, now that we got that part out of the way, what do you actually need to do to get that entry level programming job before the interview, before you apply the skills that you need to learn and how do you learn them and how do you show to that hiring manager or development team company that you're qualified? We'll learn the skills, <laughs> duh. Thanks for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.
No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. That's not it. I mean, that is part of it. That's how you start off, but that's not the entire video here. I want to actually discuss, well, how to actually get an entry-level programming job, aside from just shedding to light how a lot of these entry-level jobs are asking the world of you, so you're not too freaked out by that, because you do not need to know what 99% of these job listings require you to know to do the job. This is what you need to do. I'm going to try to be as not long-winded as possible, even though that's probably impossible for me because I am a very long-winded individual, but I'm going to try. You need to learn this skill, whether that be through tutorials, courses, all the above, you go to school, computer science, software engineering degree, whatever. You need to learn the skill. That's obvious, right? But then you need to be able to prove to the potential employer that you can do that skill. And that is a portfolio. Sure, you can get plenty of jobs by not having a portfolio if you have a computer science degree because they put a lot of value in the degree itself or a software engineering degree or whatever these developer degrees are nowadays. But even with that, and especially if you're self-taught, the best way to go about it is to build a portfolio because not only are you going to have all these different projects that you can show to this individual, but you building those projects are gonna make your skill better, which you're gonna be more knowledgeable on when you're questioned about these projects and questioned about this tech stack or, or programming concepts that the interviewer asks you. So it just makes you a better developer overall because you're building your own projects and now you have something to show for it in your portfolio. And there are a few different ways to how to go about a portfolio. One way is to build a bunch of projects. Ideally, you would host them somewhere and then you can have like your portfolio site as GitHub and it's open source. But of course you want that, uh, sure the, uh, interviewer or the dev team that you want to join can look at your open source code, but it's a lot more beneficial if they can click on a website link and actually use that website or use that app or whatever project it is. Or you can code your own portfolio website that it has links to all of these other projects and that's just another website to add to your portfolio. But one thing, and obviously I think you know where I'm going with this, if you do want to host them somewhere, Check out the sponsor of today's video, Hostinger.com. They have a very good Black Friday deal that I don't think you're going to want to miss. And this is that deal. After clicking on my link, Hostinger.com slash Forest, you are brought to this page right here where the deal is $1.99 per month for premium shared hosting. You also receive a free domain and you can also get an even better deal. And that is, if we select this for 48 months, the subtotal is $95.52. However, I have a coupon code, F-O-R-R-E-S-T, that is my name, and once we add that, we get 10% off the already discounted price. And something definitely worth mentioning, you can also get the same deal for $1.79 per month after using my promo code, not only on the 48th month package, but also the 12 month package. Obviously you will have the deal longer when you go with the 48 month, but if you're only looking for one year, this is a very good option. It is only $21.48 for 12 months of premium shared hosting. And from here, setting up a site is very easy. Just click on hosting, click on setup, click on start now. I'm creating a website for myself. It will be a portfolio site and I'm a professional website creator. We're just going to set up a WordPress right now for ease of use. I'm going to click continue. I'm going to click any particular theme that you may want. I'm going to choose this vlogger theme and then choose the domain in which you want to add it on to. Make sure you choose your server location appropriately. USA NC is closest to me and finish setup. Boom, and we are live. So if you want affordable shared web hosting right now is probably the time to do it. Incredible Black Friday deal. Use my link in the top of the description and don't forget the promo code for an even better deal, an extra 10% off. So you learn the skill, not in its entirety. You, you're never gonna know, like you see those little like dials and whatnot that are like, oh, I know 80% JavaScript on your portfolio. Oh, I know 70% Java, like what does that mean? What does knowing 80% JavaScript mean? Nobody knows. You can't say 100% because you're never going to know all of a particular language. It just doesn't work that way. Now that a little rant is over for those little weird percentage dials that even I had on my portfolio way back in the day. You need to learn the skill well enough to be able to build your own projects. You want to build your own projects in order to build a portfolio. Post them on hosting or sponsor this video using the link down below if that's what you want to do. And then if you don't feel like you're ready for that entry level programming job or you want a better chance to get a software developer position, whatever it may be. Honestly, I think this is slept on recently by individuals, Joshua Fluke, but <laughs> internships. Now, 
to address that real quick. I love Josh's videos. Josh makes great videos. I think he used to say, make sure you always get paid for internships. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I made a whole entire video about it, especially as a computer science student. You don't want to be going in and doing free work because you can be getting paid as a computer science student actually pretty well. Thousands of dollars, three, four, five, six thousand dollars a month. Maybe not six. I don't know, but a lot of money for a computer science internship and even the data analyst space or the computer science space or whatever. But recently he's been saying that you shouldn't be taking on internships, just hop into the job because it's basically the same within your first few months. I mean, that may or may not be true, but these internships, they're very, very valuable. Not just are you going to be making money and you could be doing this while you're in school. If you're self-taught, we'll get to that in a second, but also you're going to be improving your skill if you're doing a developer internship, if not, whatever, you'll also, regardless, be making connections, building your network. That's literally how I got my software engineering job. I was a data analyst intern at Norfolk Southern. They had an in-house enterprise web application that was being built. They knew I wanted to do programming instead of data analyst work. They outsourced that project though, but I was referenced, I, I was recommended rather to that company the startup that I used to work for is just a small company working on this big project for Norfolk Southern. And that's how I got my first software engineering job from the network that I made at my internship. That's just one of many ways that an internship is valuable. So yeah, get an internship. If you're self-taught, obviously a little bit more difficult to get an internship or a co-op or apprenticeship, whatever you want to call it. And I obviously can't talk from personal experience. Although I did get one when I was like very early on in college, that one was unpaid, but it was only two weeks. So that, if you can get an internship, try. But I know like at least half of my audience are computer science students, so value those internships. And it doesn't matter that it, if it's in web development and you wanna be a web developer or not, it's gonna be valuable one way or another. So learn the skill, build a portfolio, get an internship, and honestly, you can get the internship without the portfolio. It's a lot easier to get an internship than an entry level programming job. So those are interchangeable in terms of order of operations, or you can do them at the same time. I mean, depends on how, like how much you like to work. That's how you actually get an entry level programming job. I know I am not going through the interview process. I already discussed that was the last video I made. And I think that has more value in it than what I can add on quickly to the end of this video. And I think I already discussed, recapped that video. So that should really help you in getting prepared to apply for that entry level programming job. And then the last video or multiple other videos on my channel will allow you to give you a guidance into how to go about passing the interview so you can land that entry level programming job. I hope this video helped you out. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I don't know. Either way, like the video. I'd appreciate it for the algorithm. Leave a comment below because Social Leader is weeks away. I don't know if I'm gonna launch it, but it's uh, it's very close, the MVP to being done. If you don't know what it is, stay tuned, you understand. So those comments not only will help with the YouTube algorithm for me, selfishly, but it also gets you higher up in the YouTube leaderboard for this year, because it is gonna be done by the end of the year. And It'll be interesting to see who is on top. Subscribe if you aren't already. Hit the bell if you are already. And I'll see you on the next video.